Alrighty, hello Internet. Um, this is part two in a little series of to answer the question, how do you update things in HTML using JavaScript, right? You've heard of this cool thing called JavaScript. You know it can update things, you know, make your web pages dynamic, but oh my goodness, how do you do it? The previous video showed how to do this with vanilla JavaScript, um, and you can see here we can drink strength potions and our strength increases. Fantastic. Our name is apparently Abby. Um, you can see that on the page it started as Ben, Ben, um, strength of five, uh, but when we, we reload this page, I just hit a five there, our name is Abby and our strength is seven, um, and that is because we have put that data in JavaScript and actually changed it on, on the DOM, on the, on the document. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing now in this video, but instead of using um, uh, plain old JavaScript, sorry, like mind freeze or whatever there, brain fart, I don't know. Uh, we're instead going to use uh, jQuery. So I here's my jQuery window. I was wondering, that's why I was going, oh, I was like, where did it go? It's over here. Uh, so here's jQuery. We're going to do almost the exact same thing. Kind of the nice thing about jQuery is it's almost identical. In fact, the, the, this will be identical. Um, but our JavaScript is going to be much simpler. We won't have to do nearly as much. So, but again, we can just copy paste in this HTML. Let's do that. We'll do the exact same thing. Um, I do want to make one other change. Uh, if the game isn't loaded, let's not populate these. Like, why would we have a Ben in there and a five? Like, that's kind of wonky, right? Um, we should probably have it be blank. Welcome. Eh. Here's as eh, stats. And you may have even seen this on web pages, like maybe old, maybe, I don't know, more like late you know, 90s or early 2000s or something, maybe. Uh, you probably would see this less now, but where you go to a page and you just see like these blank spots, right? And this is why you loaded up the HTML, but maybe the JavaScript failed for some reason, or you've got no script and it's blocked JavaScript. Um, nowadays, with frameworks that are smarter than that, you don't have this issue so much, or you would see something slightly different or whatever. Um, but anyway, that's why you might have seen things like that before, right? We haven't loaded up the application yet. We haven't, we haven't loaded in all those things. Um, Let's also copy the JavaScript, um, and we're just going to do things in a jQuery way. So the only difference in the HTML is we have to load up the jQuery library. I went ahead and downloaded it from online. This is the minified JS. Uh, this is useless. <laughs> right? Who can understand this? Um, they've done this minifying thing, which I should talk about how that goes also at some point. Um, but uh, anyway, you can just go and download it online, or you can even point to it like there's... I don't know, there's probably C, like JS, CDN, something. I don't know, you can find public URLs, um, but just go ahead and download it, it's fine. And you don't have to download the minified one, but when you deploy it, it's, it's in, when you're putting this online, it's better if the user downloads a smaller file, and this minified one is smaller than any human, you know, manually could make it. A computer has gone over this JavaScript and taken out every non-essential characters, shortened variable names from nice happy names to super short N's and E's and O's and things, right? Completely unreadable, uh, but good for computers. Um, anyway, you need jQuery because we're going to use jQuery. Uh, and then here we, we're, we're just going to kind of go over this and do things in a more jQuery way. Exact same code from the JavaScript. Some of this is just going to get shorter, basically. So first thing, um, as always, we do still need to use the DOM. Actually, let's not start with that. Um, let's start with something that'll be a little easier. So here we go. Here's the thing. Get an element by ID. There's a much easier way to do this with jQuery. Um, jQuery has, provides this built-in function called dollar. That's the name of the function. You could, in theory, if you wanted, you could make a function and call it dollar <laughs> and have it do things. jQuery has done that. They have a function and just called dollar sign. So we shouldn't also name our function dollar, that will cause a conflict of some kind. I don't know if that'll overwrite theirs or if JavaScript will complain and error out. I don't know. We're not going to do it, so it's not an issue. Um, but that's all it's done. So when you look at jQuery code, it looks really weird because you see all these dollars, all this like, what, what the hell is this dollar thing? That's just what they named their function. JavaScript is super weird. Most languages, you wouldn't be able to name a function dollar sign. That They'd be like, what? It has to start with a letter. That's the rule in most programming languages. JavaScript is a little more loosey-goosey with what you name things. Dollar is a totally fine name. So they've made a function called dollar. Um, and what you, you pass that function is any kind of CSS type selector. So if you know CSS, fantastic, that'll help you. If you don't, it's not hard to learn. Um, but where previously, you know, in, in vanilla JS, we said get document element by ID, and here's the ID name. Here you do it in the CSS-y way. In CSS, any ID is prefixed with a hash symbol. That's just how it's done. Um, and you do strength potion. 
So this code right here, this dollar strength potion is the exact same as document blah, 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 blah. Um, not exactly the same. It returns something different. In fact, I don't know if this will work. I'm very curious now to see if it will. Let's find out. I don't know that it will. Oh, other things aren't working anyway. Um, in fact, I don't know why they're not working now that I think about it. Do we have some other error with uh, add event listener is not a function? Yeah, okay, so that's that's not valid. Um, jQuery has a different way to do it. Instead of add event listener, they're just like, just type on, it's fine. And it does the exact same thing. <laughs> so this should work for us, here we go. Now, now we have valid um, jQuery, it still works. So that's, and that dollar thing is kind of the, the core of jQuery. And, and how would you know it was on, right? How do you know to use dot on? That's part of the jQuery documentation. So um, we can search Google, or in my case, DuckDuckGo, because I'm a weirdo, um, and find the documentation for on. And they tell you, right? Yeah, it's dot on. You give it the events you want to listen to. That's another um, nice thing is you could listen to click or like, I don't know, mouse down or key up or whatever. You can list as many events as you want, and it'll attach event handlers from all of them. Um, and the other advantage is that this selector, in this case, it only returned one thing like we had before, um, but we can do the same thing for multiple. Like what I said, right? I said this is the exact same as document get elements. It's not the exact same. The dollar function doesn't return normal DOM elements. It returns special jQuery objects that have all these functions, right? That's why on is a function and get elements by class name wasn't. Document get elements by class name, or sorry, add event handler wasn't. Get, document get elements by class name returns a very special type of object that has some special, you know, some functions on it. Those are the functions that that kind of object has. The jQuery object is a totally separate thing. It has its own functions on it. The old functions aren't there. The jQuery functions are. Um, so that's why add event listener didn't work. Instead, they called it on. It's much easier to type, right? So we save a ton of code, that, or a ton of writing, sorry, a lot of typing of characters. That's kind of good. Um, I mean, you can go too far with that and make things unreadably short, but as long as you know the dollar thing, then you're good. Um, but the other nice example, so again, because it doesn't return a, um, you know, one of those built-in uh, browser-provided objects, uh, jQuery also lets us be super nice. We can do the same thing down here. We can say, I want to find everything with a class, and classes in CSS start with a dot instead of a hash. I want to find those, and to those, I want to change the inner text, and it does provide, actually, no, sorry, it doesn't. It calls it just text. Again, you have to look these things, things up to know. Um, and that would be the game state name. So let's compare. Previously, what we did was we said find all the elements by class name, player name, store them here, loop over them all, set all their text to be the, the name of the player, right? Game state name, which is set up here, Abby. Here we just say, okay, yeah, find all those. This returns us a nice jQuery object where we don't have to loop over it. These functions that they've given us on text anything, they apply to whatever, the entire set of whatever jQuery found, whether it was one element, like up here, or there was multiple elements, like it was down here, or if it was zero elements. If it was zero elements and you call that text on it, it will say, yeah, okay, but there was none of them, so I don't have to do anything. So these five lines, or whatever, all become one. Great. Uh, and the other thing now, same with player strength, we can do the same thing. And the text should be game state strength. This function has now become much shorter. I don't know, I was kind of cheating to remove that, that white space, but we don't need it anymore. And we could imagine, I mean, now we can do all the other ones too. We could do player intelligence, um, put that in there. We, we didn't make that in the uh, DOM, but let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so out here, then we would just need to wrap up intelligence. Um, same thing, player intelligence. And charisma, player charisma. All right, and this should all still work because task was great. Oh no, I've ruined everything. So here, that was kind of interesting to see, right? So I accidentally told it, set it to strength for all three. This one should actually be intelligence. And the IDE is nice and knows what I'm talking about. And you can even see when I like, it's highlighting the same, right? It says, oh, strength, strength, strength. This is what, a good IDE is good to get. So PHP Storm um, costs money. You can get a three, 30 day trial. Um, if you want free IDEs out there, they're 100% R. I've just used, I've used PHP Storm for so long at my previous job, at my current job. Uh, I guess at my future job, I won't be using it. I'll be using Visual Studio, but um, doesn't matter. There's a lot of good IDEs out there, uh, and they have all these kinds of nice features of like, you know, oh, it knows what game state is. I don't have to keep talking. Once I give it enough characters, there's something right. Oh, strength, great, enter, done. I don't have to type anymore. 
Um, and this highlighting thing is really useful too. So anyway, uh, let's refresh again. OK, great. Now I have the right behavior. Uh, the other thing we can do, which is the one I was starting with but realized eh, it's going to be kind of weird, uh, jQuery also has this kind of built-in function. This syntax looks really weird. I don't know how it's working under the hood, to be 100% honest. But you can pass into this jQuery function a function. And that won't be run until jQuery says, OK, we're safe to run. And jQuery doesn't say that things are safe to run until this event listener DOM content loaded has happened. Um, so you could be more explicit about it. Like you could say, I want to find document, and I want to do on DOM content loaded. You could do this and pass a function. Uh, this will work as well. And in fact, let's just let's do it that way at first, right? So we can give it the document element. Um, and our things are still working. Whoops, sorry, if I can click. <laughs> our things still work. Um, but because jQuery is jQuery and has this bizarre behavior, what you'll often see is people just say dollar function do this thing, and it still works. Um, because it is already internally waiting for the DOM to be ready before it executes anything. So you'll see this a lot in jQuery land, and that looks super weird. I was going to start there because that was on top of the file, but I was like, that's just like bizarre. We should go into the event handlers in general first. So yeah, that's some bizarre jQuery syntax um, that, that waits for the DOM to be loaded. And if we just want to see, I don't know, side by side, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you could shorten these things up more by removing curly braces and things. But this code is undeniably shorter. And I also, I don't know why I have more white space, right? Let's, let's try to make it a more fair comparison. Um, but it's much shorter. This part especially, right? We no longer have to worry about, is it one element? Is it 10 elements? Is it zero elements? We just say, hey, jQuery, find them, however many there are. And then I want you to do this thing. I want you to set the text of the element. I want you to attach a, an event handler using on. Um, and again, the knowledge isn't like, right? It's add event listener in plain JavaScript. It's on with jQuery. It's inner text equals, right? Assigned the inner text property in plain JavaScript like we have over here, right? Over here, we call this function called text and pass in a value. So these little differences of like that knowledge isn't transferable. But everything about, OK, but we're still attaching event handlers, right? Like we're still setting, we're making all the exact same changes. We're just using letting jQuery kind of handle all the common stuff for us. I mean, the, the, jQuery was written for for two reasons. One was, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, browsers used to be like wildly different. You didn't know some browsers use DOM content loaded, but other browsers use a different one. And so you could, you know, by using this syntax, you're like, jQuery, you figure it out. You figure out what this particular browser uses. Fine. Now browsers are more standard. That's not so much an issue. But the other reason that jQuery was made was just to simplify quality of life improvements of like, hey, we know you're going to want to add event listeners all the time. And actually, even in the day, it wasn't always add event listener. IE used to call it some Internet Explorer used to call it something else. So, but anyway, so they took the common things and said, let's make it easier to do the common tasks. You know, I'm going to, I want five things. There's going to be five things on page with player name, whatever, and just make it really, really easy to, to do, um, which is great. That's exactly what you want out of a library, right? So, kind of the, the, the reasons of um, browser interoperability, interoperability, however you say that, <laughs> where, how many R's are in there. Um, those reasons are less important reason to use jQuery. That browsers have, have settled down and are working together to define the standards mostly um, so that things are pretty, pretty unified. Um, but the, these kinds of things, like it's still very wordy sometimes or verbose uh, how you need to do things in um, with, with just straight up vanilla JS. So jQuery helps you do that more succinctly. Um, I kind of alluded to this in the previous video. The, the danger can be um, when it's easier to do things with CSS selectors like this, it can be very easy. Like you might say, uh, you know, J CSS lets you do all kinds of very specific selectors. So when you're starting out, you might say, yeah, oh, we always have the player name at the top of the page. That's always where we're going to have a player name. So I'm going to say, yeah, I only look for player name inside a header or something. Or maybe at the, maybe at the beginning you didn't. I don't know, you, you only had a span tag. And you're like, yeah, 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 great. It's the, it's the header that has the span tag. And because you can get super specific with jQuery in a much easier way, like to do that in vanilla JS would be a nightmare. Um, doing it here is much easier with, with jQuery. So it's tempting to just do it, because you're like, yeah, I've got this great power. I can do it. Um, but it's very easy to get like too specific or make things, you, you can kind of be too clever for your own good. Um, so that, that, that's kind of what I was alluding to before. When it's easier to do things, it's also easier to do things badly, <laughs> I guess. So 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know what some good rules of thumbs are that, that that I can give you. It's something that you'll discover by doing things. You know, you'll you'll try to be specific. And that problem I was mentioning too before in the previous video of like maybe you decide that all player names should have a particular sort of sort of styling and and then right you just get into the things get all kind of mixy. It's hard to. I don't know, I find it hard to vocalize, but as you code and as you make a bigger project, you'll start to see those kinds of things pop up where it's like, oh, I was too specific, or I wasn't specific enough, or I didn't think about this in advance and didn't do that. Um, and and the, what is the right level of specificity, right, in, in these jQuery selectors? It's really up to your application, um, but there is definitely thing, such a thing as like way too specific 99% of the time and way too broad the 99% of the time. So you'll discover that happy medium as you code, I think, is, is the only thing I can say. Um, I would need concrete examples in front of me to, to say more. I think it's hard to kind of think of them off the top of my head. Um, so anyway, um, that's that's it. That's it. Was this a shorter video? Gosh, I hope so. The last one was like 45 minutes. This was 16. Wonderful. Um, in the next video, I will show how you do the exact same thing, but using Angular. Um, which right now, right, isn't doing anything. It looks totally different. That's spoilers. Let's talk about it next video. Um, and again, one other thing I just want to say, if you don't know much coding, I think I recommend learning jQuery first before, like, you know, you who go deep Googling how to do things in plain JS, no one's going to do anything in plain JS anymore, or rare is, is the time <laughs> that, they, that you'll see that. Um, people are going to be using a framework. A lot of people are still using jQuery. I think of it as kind of a dead library, but it's been around for a long time and there are still weird things using it. It's still it's still used. It's still used and I don't know why. <laughs> but because because there's different technologies out there. Sometimes it's the right tool for the job. Um, but right, and then when I say that, it's like, well, why would I learn jQuery then? Um, because it's easier. If you're a new programmer, I think Angular would be a lot, and I'll, and I'll talk about the reasons for that. I mean, if you want to take on the challenge, 100% feel free. Um, Angular is a pro tool. You can get jobs if you're a great Angular programmer, 100%. Um, jQuery, I mean, you can, but they're not the same kinds of jobs. They're lower paying, they're lower paying jobs, right? Um, which I don't know, maybe that's fine. Depends on what you want. Um, uh, yeah, there's, I don't know, there's the problems associated with all of them, to be fair. Um, but I don't know, jQuery is, is, the, is the old school way and Angular is kind of the new school way. Um, but again, Angular is a much easier way to learn and learn all the base things like, oh, I'm attaching event handlers, right? Like, you'll learn all the same things um, but, but I think it's interesting to see the comparison, how the two work, and, and really seeing how it really, like, what's the nitty gritty of what's going on? Because jQuery is doing all this stuff under the hood. It's just doing it for you. Um, so again, knowing how these things really uh, work is helpful. And, you know, helps when you're explaining, like, what the hell does this line do? <laughs> but, but yeah, but if you're learning new, you've never done JS before, I would recommend learn jQuery. You're going to learn all the good basics. Um, you don't need to learn get elements by class name and all the other equivalent functions and how to do, you know, when you want to do stuff like this, don't even worry about how you would do that in plain JS, like you're going to kill yourself. Um, just use jQuery. <laughs> it's going to make that part much simpler. Um, and that, that's why people use it. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, next video will be Angular. I've rambled quite enough. As always, thank you very much. I hope this has been useful and informative and that my opinions don't prove terribly wrong in like three years or something when everything changes. The JavaScript world, or even today, I don't know. Um, then I'll feel embarrassed and bad. Uh, but but yes. Anyway, let's go on to the next video. Uh, again, I'll have just links in the description for the other two videos, uh, and all this code is online in the GitHub repository, so you can copy it all there rather than I don't know. Hopefully, you're following a lot long and typing. That's a better way to learn. But if you also just want to download, uh, I'll, I'll have them online as well. So anyway, quite enough. Thanks again, and uh, hope to see you in the next video.